Next up with our PQI clinical overview is Latha Radhakrishnan, clinical pharmacist at the University of Illinois Cancer Center. Latha will speak about the PQI that she wrote on granisetron for chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. Latha. Thanks, Stephen. So today, as Stephen mentioned, I'll be talking about the granisetron transdermal uh, system, or patch. Um, the brand name is Sancuso. This is most certainly not a new product. That's been a, it's actually been available on the market since September 2000, or sorry, FDA approved since September 2008. Um, but perhaps more direction or more patient situations um, could direct our use in this product and we could utilize this a little bit better. Um, also with the explosion, particularly in the oral oncolytics area um, in the space, um, there's more opportunities here to really utilize the patch um, to its fullest degree. So a little bit about, about the background. Um, it was approved in 2008 for the prevention of nausea and vomiting in patients receiving moderately and or highly amatogenic chemotherapy for up to five days. So that is the indication um, for both oral and IV. Next slide, Stephen. So I think more direction is just needed based on clinical experience of where to consider using the transdermal system in certain patient situations. And the first bullet point of moderate to highly hematogenic oral multi-day chemotherapy, this is in fact where I really got my experience from in using it in patients that were starting on temozolomide at the 150 milligram per, per metered squared dose daily for five days back in um, 2010, 2011. So we would you know, start the Sankuso patch on these patients Patients and you know it worked very well for those patients that were on uh, temozolomide for five days. Also, can be used for patients having you know difficulty swallowing due to mucositis, tumor location, patients on IV chemotherapy plus radiation. So you think about your head and neck cancer patients, patients with issues with gut motility and absorption due to. Um, being on pain medications or tumor location, of course, your patients that have adherence issues. Um, and then also, I you know use this in patients with refractory nausea and vomiting despite appropriate preventative uh, antiemetics. So that's another area where um, the patch can be utilized. Next slide. So with the PQI process, upon receipt of, of an order for granisetron uh, patch, just ensuring that it's appropriate to use. So again, using it in moderately hematogenic and highly hematogenic, either IV or oral um, chemotherapy. Um, making sure to check the start date for the chemotherapy cycle because you do have to instruct the patient to apply the patch 24 to 48 hours prior to receiving chemotherapy. The patient needs to wear the patch for the, entire, for the entirety of when the chemotherapy is either being infused or being administered orally and remove at least one day uh, after chemotherapy has been completed. Um, make sure to verify cover, uh, prescription coverage and um, Kiwa Kirin has a patient RX solutions hub that is excellent in assisting in this process. Um, for patients that have difficulty um, keeping the patch on, so thinking about your patients that um, are you know, having hot flashes and they're sweating, so the use the medical adhesive tape or tegaderm on the edges could assist so that the patch stays in place. And even though this is used in the um, preventative uh, measures, uh, you do need to make sure that a patient has like rescue medication like procopirazine as well um, in the event that they are nauseous. Next slide, Stephen. So patient-centered activities, um, making sure you know, to talk about application instructions, and we won't go through that, but avoiding sunlight and heating sources. So that can affect the efficacy as well as um, cause some skin issues. So making sure to talk to them about it. Constipation was the big toxicity uh, or the toxicity that was noticed. So talking to them about using a stimulant laxative as well as a stool softener. And then calendars would assist in application and the removal of the patch and making sure patients are covering their skin for another 10 days after the patch is removed to avoid potential skin reactions is another important education piece. And if there are any financial assistance issues using Patient RX solution, and one thing that's really great, um, and I'm, I know I'm running out of time, is the Sancuso patch replacement program. If the chemotherapy is delayed and the patient has already put the patch on, there is a, a replacement program uh, available. 
Next slide. And these are just the references available and the full PQI is available on the web page. Thank you, Stephen. Thanks, Latha. And what we'll do is we'll open it up for questions for our members. So feel free to use the chat or the Q&A boxes and uh, we'll field your questions. Um, and uh, if you do have a question, you don't think of it now, but it comes uh, to you in the next five, 10 minutes or even before the end of the webinar, feel free to still send it and we will definitely connect with Latha um, to get you an answer. Now, Latha, for our members out there listening, what are some of the main takeaways from today's PQI? I know you gave a, a high level overview, but if you had to you know, uh, say, what are the main takeaways? Uh, what would those be? I think identifying those patients, you know, we're in the ENCODA space and oral oncolytics, and there have been quite a few approvals uh, relatively recently with more uh, oral oncolytics in the moderately to highly hematogenic space, so PARP inhibitors, uh, lawn surf is another example. Um, so in temozolomide, of course, that's been there. But there are quite a few, and if they're getting multi-day treatment um, and they're having difficulty swallowing or they have issues with adherence, then perhaps the Grinisetron transdermal patch would be a great option for those patients. So identification. Awesome, Latha. Thank you. And again, if anyone has any questions, feel free to enter them in the chat or Q&A box, and uh, we'd be happy to get those to Latha. Um, thank you again, Latha. And as you mentioned, the PQI is available on ENCODA's website, encoda.org forward slash PQI.